Welcome. My name is Doug Cook. I am going to be your guide tonight taking you along a trail of history. Our history. The history of scouting. And the history of Guthrie. Since we are from Oklahoma, let's start with a day in its history, April 22, 1889. Scouting in Guthrie has a history that goes back almost as far as the history of Guthrie itself. Resources used in this presentation include newspapers' clippings as history unfolds. Oven County has had 42 newspapers available for research through the Oklahoma Historical Society. Only one is left today. But their editions prior to 1922 have been scanned and gone through optical character recognition so that you can type in a search term and find articles on any topic you want to. Research, such as Scout or Troop or Eagle Scout. This helped fill in the early gaps, at least until 1922, a copyright begins and later dates I had to use other subscription services. Very early in Guthrie history, we built a wooden truss bridge within the first two months after the land run to cross over the Cottonwood Creek to get over to the west side of this new community. Here's a view of that first wooden bridge. We are looking west on what today is Noble Avenue, but back then was just a footpath, a horse path which after construction allowed wagons to cross. If you were to send this picture as a postcard, you would set your return address as name, your local street name, and Indian Territory, Oklahoma. Here is a view in 1893 of Harrison Avenue looking east, and how the same location appears today. By 1899, Roth continues in the capital city of the territory. This is also Harrison Avenue now looking west. It's market day and those are wagons filled with cotton. Electricity has arrived, and you can see the utility poles out front. These poles would be later relocated behind the business fronts in the back alleys. Also in 1899, halfway across the world, a conflict develops in what today is called South Africa. Such colonial settlers renew an independence movement that would be called the Second Boer War. For the British, possession of this colony was important for its rich mineral resources. Gold and later diamonds were discovered in this area. The Dutch settlers called the Boer Thorn militias and tried to force the British hour of the contested territory highlighted in orange. News arrives and is reported in the Guthrie Daily Leader the very next day on Saturday, October 14, 1899. By this time in history transatlantic cable telegraph cables are laid across the Atlantic Ocean, allowing the relay from news from London saving about three weeks of delay. This technology was a significant improvement in the speed of news traveling across the world. You can imagine most Guthrie residents may scratch their heads trying to figure out location this remote conflict, and right here in the highlighted third paragraph, we see the very first mention of a regiment under the command of a lieutenant, Colonel Baden Powell, reporting he is badly outnumbered. Five days later, on October 19, comes an update. And second mention of Colonel Baden Powell holding his own news updates would continue to arrive at first by telegraph, until the lines were cut. And then by cunning and dial BP sends runners in and out with messages using codes and tricks he would later detail in his books. This was the first time in human history updates on a conflict half a world away could be read over breakfast the next day. This was beginning of updates, which would continue for the next 216 days. The building of celebrity, as we now call it focusing attention on one news item, has its nucleus right here. Meanwhile, in Guthrie citizens, were already complaining about the wooden bridge built just ten years ago. This creek likes to flood, and the newspaper reports on plans of the need for a new bridge. A bridge, if built out of iron, could stand up to the forces of floods that had already shown its influence on this less than acceptable crossing, and one was built. It was time for a twentieth-century bridge. Iron was much more sturdy, and could offer this community all they would need to stand up to the flooding. It was an important upgrade. Local Guthrians would head down to the bridge to pose for selfies taken by a photographer and show off their horse-drawn carriage, because it would your status in the community and the entire family could fit in your Surrey. By the 17th of May 1900, 216 days later, the relief of Maithking with reinforcements is achieved because of local delays in telegraph operations due to those cut lines. It takes two days for news to spread to London. 
and it's reported in the morning news of one of the London papers, and across the world, as in the New York Times. The six-hour time difference allows enough time to compose the story in London, transmit it across the ocean, and then relay it to the whole nation via a well-developed grid of telegraph systems, including the capital of Indian Territory. Saturday evening, May 19, 1900, because of the technology, news now travels fast. The relief of Mafeking is recognized as one of the first mass media events, for well, the commander of the regiment posted there. His popularity skyrockets into superstardom with respect to admiration that develops in his home country. Three days later, a small blurb appears in the Guthrie Daily Leader that Colonel Robert Baden Powell gets a promotion to Major General. Moving forward now seven years, Oklahoma becomes a state in 1907, Guthrie its capital. While in the United Kingdom, a book written as a military manual aids to scouting becomes popular to young boys seeking fun things to do. I think if a book were written in today's terminology, BP might has chosen aids to reconnoitering and reconnaissance. He intended it for military training, and he was concerned about young lads reading it without enough maturity. Influenced by the ideas of Ernest Thompson Seton and Daniel Carter Beard Baden Powell dropped the military aspects and wrote his book. E.P. tested these ideas on outdoor skills with an experimental campout on the 1st of August, 1907, located on a little island on the southeast coast of Britain called Brunsey Island. Twenty-two boys learned skills in camping nature, life-saving, and first aid through games and contests. He wanted to equalize the status of all youth without respect to knowing their class in society, which families they came from. The culture in this Edwardian time of the early twentieth century was still largely class-based. BP would encourage a uniform later, where youth could all start out as equals. They were rewarded with badges for skills they learned, and not their family status in society. They would be recognized by their merits of their actions. This is where we get the word merit badge. With the revisions, some additions, and testing in the field, BP authors the first scout handbook. It's now the year 1910. But wait, it's time for a quick bridge update. It's the year 1909, and concerned citizens are getting frustrated with their iron bridge. It stands fast, but the railroad gets so busy traffic gets backed up on Noble Arbe many times a day as each train passes. Citizens discuss wouldn't it be nice to build a bridge over a bridge so traffic will go over the train while the current bridge allows access to business nearby. All right, back to 1910. Now, it's the year 1910. Counting originally envisioned by Baden Powell as a youth program for the UK is emulated by dozens of countries around the world, including the USA. The Boy Scouts of America is incorporated in 1910 and scout troops form across the USA. The state capital moves to Oklahoma City. Leave the local published thoughts in editorials, Guthrie newspapers to your own research. In 1912, Robert Baden Powell goes on a tour for his first visit to the USA. There he met with the two authors that helped him develop concepts he includes in the first scout handbook. On the left is Ernest Thomas Seaton. On the right is Daniel Carter Beard. Seaton had a youth program called Woodcraft Indians. This program taught the history of Native Americans and introduced the concepts of conservation and environmental awareness. Beard was also a naturalist a writer and illustrator. He started a youth organization in 1905 called the Sons of Daniel Boone which also sought to teach outdoor skills. With the combination of efforts by James E. West on the right, Ernest Thompson Seaton and Dan Beard that formed the Boy Scouts of America in 1910. Seaton and Beard merged their youth programs into the BSA. Seaton's legacy includes conservation ethics and the law that today is incorporated into the Order of the Arrow a scout honor society dedicated to service. While Dan Beard's legacy includes all those pioneering skills, not tying wood tools use and safety, it's at this stage in our story that I want to introduce all the Rose Eldred. At age 16 he completes all the requirements for the newly developed Eagle Scout Award. Being the first, a national board of review was conducted. James West, Ernest Thompson Seaton, and Daniel Carter Beard were on this board as well as Arthur R. Forbush and Wilbur D. 
Longfellow and finally Robert Baden Powell himself. Talk about pressure. His eventual court of honor was delayed a while because someone had to design the award. The 22nd of June 1911 is the first mention of scouting active in Guthrie. Reverend John Abernathy, who was pastor of Methodist Episcopal South Church, is mentioned as forming and uniforming a scout troop. He later is reported to take the new scouts on a 35-mile hike to Oklahoma City. Other they embark on an even longer trek to the mouth of the Cimarron River in Tulsa County and back along the Washington Irving Trail. The Methodist Episcopal South Church was a denomination that split from Methodist Episcopal due to beliefs for and against slavery. The schism developed in 1852, then. On February 27, 1915, a news article describes the pastor T. S. Pittinger of the Methodist Episcopal Church located on Broad and Noble, today known as the Guthrie First United Methodist Church, of a recruitment drive to start a Boy Scout troop. By the 25th of May 1916, Troop 3 is formed, with an official charter from the Boy Scouts of America. The first scoutmaster was mentioned as Bob Stewart. Several mentions are made in varying articles during the next few years of the unit's activity. In 1917, Ella McCrill is mentioned as pastor and scoutmaster. As the BSA was figuring out the best way to run programs, the concept of the council allowed for local communities to organize their scouting units to create group activities. The Guthrie Scout Council was the result. Our city's troops developed into its own council. This lasted two years before being absorbed into the Cimarron Valley Council in 1918. With this and other future mergers came troop number were changed to resolve numbering conflicts. In then, in 1919, an ad for a movie appears in the local newspaper. Couch to the rescue. You can see this movie on YouTube. Where was this Highland Theater? Right here. To the right of the Guthrie Daily Leader, do you remember the Granny Hadron restaurant? By 1921 the Scoutmaster is listed on this charter document as Henry Josma. His age was 23. This document was discovered around 2018 while the church was undergoing heating and cooling ductwork. It was found hanging in a hidden wall that concealed the ductwork. It stood there as a sort of time capsule, waiting nearly 80 years before its discovery. In 1920, Walt Napa, a 27-year-old immigrant from Switzerland, comes to Guthrie as a music instructor. He uses his applies his musical education recruiting youth from the talents of existing Boy Scout and Girl Scout troops, and develops a scout band. Numerous newspaper references over a three-year span from 1920 to 1922 show his dedication and service to the community of Guthrie and scouting. It is probable he is registered with Troop 63 as a leader, as I found fundraisers to support the band only associated with this church. An article mentioned campfire girls, but more said girl scouts when referencing the 58-piece band. It seems that the first implementation of co-ed scouting was here nearly 100 years before. Round the year 2000 a troop flag was found stored in the bottom of a cabinet in our troop storeroom. We can date this flag to between 1933 and 1935, as these were the only years the pennant style was available in the BSA catalogues of that era. The misspelling of Guthrie probably preserved it as an archive all these years unused. In 1935 the BSA planned the first National Scout Jamboree. Three from our troop were all set to go along with the Scoutmaster of Troop 62. The plans were foiled by a polio outbreak. This was not the first time a virus changed scouting plans. Now it's 1937, and now we can say we have a proper bridge. One you can drive over the train without a delay, and we are assured it will span most floods that may happen. Oh. Well, at least those scouts got to go. By 1937, not three but four yet are now signed up to participate in the first National Scout Jamboree. I should mention here that a double set of neckerchiefs from the 1937 National Scout Jamboree was found next to the earlier mentioned troop flag. We would later theorize, based on newspaper articles, that these neckers were probably from one of the four youth or the adult leader that went from the troop. The neckerchief was found as one complete square of cloth that could produce two neckerchiefs if cut down the diagonal. 
During the first twenty years of the Boy Scout movement, it became apparent a need existed for youth participants younger than twelve. By 1930, the BSA formed Cub Scouting. This church saw the need as well forming its first Cub Scout pack in 1946. This pack celebrates its 75th anniversary in 2021. For some reason, Troop 63 transfers to the First Presbyterian Church and later to the First Baptist Church, where activity continues until 1973. And Troop 50 gets chartered in 1955. Its first scoutmaster is Spencer Sessions. After Troop 50 forms, Explorer Post 50 is chartered offering older teens more challenging opportunities. In 1961, Scoutmaster Spencer Sessions hands over the job to a recently graduated 27-year-old lawyer named Frank Davis. A year later, Frank announces his first candidacy running for the Logan County Attorney position. He serves 39 years and has 35 young men achieve the rank of Eagle. Looking at the 1950s, we get more news material. In the clipping on the left, you can identify an explorer because they have dark green uniform shirts, like today's venturing, as opposed to the lighter olive green color of a scout shirt. Several of our scouts head to the 1960 National Jamboree celebrating 50 years of scouting. And if you're ever wondering who may be 850's youngest Eagle Scout, it may be this gentleman, Billy McIntosh, who earned his in 1959 at the age of 12. Activities and fundraisers are like any scout troop for this time. To go to high adventure camps, a lot of fundraising is needed. Fireworks were popular and profitably back then, but that got banned by the late 1970s. A hot dog cart during the community carnival was publicized. And the first first hum and being supper started in 1962. The recipe started with K. Davis and it's been passed down through generations of caretakers. 2022 will be the 60th anniversary of that event. In 1998, exploring is revised to focus on career-based specialty program for posts. Venturing is a renovation of exploring with a restructuring to meet the needs of today's young adults. In 2003, 850 creates its first venturing crew. The venturing program is designed to allow a crew to focus on speciality areas that are chosen by the young adults in the crew. It's less regimented than troop management. The adult leader is purposefully named the advisor as opposed to the cubmaster or scoutmaster terms which originated in Edwardian times of the early 1900s. This range of focus can vary from arts and hobbies, faith, sports, STEM conservation, and is most frequently chosen by our crew outdoor specialties. To date, there are six venturers have earned the Silver Award Venturing's highest honor today called the Summit Award. It's equivalent to the Eagle Scout Award and the Quartermaster Award in Sea Scouting. Every one of these recipients have also earned the Ranger Award the Outdoor Specialty Recognition. The Guthrie First United Methodist Church has had a continuous run of over 105 years of official sponsorship of scouting, and in that time, 90, one known youth have achieved scouting's highest honors. The listing is presented before you. This includes 86 Eagle Scouts. 74 from Troop 850, 12 from Troop 63. It also includes those six venturers I just mentioned. One fellow in this list earned both his Eagle Scout Award and the Venturing Silver Award. We thank our chartering organization and all the pastors, church councils, wards, patrons, donators and parish owners that have given us a home for scouting so we can add to the mission of your ministry. We also thank you our parents and volunteers and businesses that support scouting. But I should mention now, if we expand our research, there's something new I wanted to share. This timeline of scouting activity in Guthrie is incomplete, but it's best I could verify. Here are shown are all the known units I could find. Green units are sponsored by the Guthrie FUMC. But we need a correction here. In this presentation, I discussed our early history of how scouting started in Guthrie, and how Troop 1 began at the Methodist Episcopal South Church around 1911. And then Troop 3 of the Methodist Episcopal Church starts by 1915 and gets their official charter a month later than Troop 1 in 1916. These congregations later merged to become the Methodist Church, and then later the United Methodist Church, which brings us where we are today, except the word first. 
you'll see a first of several places, like a First National Bank. It's a custom to call your place first when you are. For Guthrie, it all goes back to the land claim office that April Day in 1889. If you were a banker, and some other banker was ahead of you, you were not going to call your bank the Second National Bank. You would have picked some other word to sound impressive. And because of the merger history of this church, Troop One's history is our history, and we are the legacy of the first scout troop in Guthrie, which was among all those other troops forming near the very birth of scouting in America. And now back to Guthrie News, December 2018. Now, we have a proper bridge, a bridge for the 21st century, no chunks of roadway dropping out, and supporting four lanes of traffic and rated to stay high and dry up to a 100-year flood. Oh. Oh, well. We discovered today that Bridge has gone through a history spanning 122 years. Throughout my story, we learned it was the citizens of Guthrie who worked to upgrade it to something better. They frequently met with setbacks, delays, frustrations, disappointments, and legal battles. But they eventually got there. They weathered through the storms. The Bridge is a symbol of the challenges faced and overcome over a hundred years. Scouting has had its challenges and changes in the past few years. Civil litigation, membership qualification changes, bankruptcy, and COVID-19 have given the current leaders unprecedented challenges at all levels from the unit level and up. A virtual storm of controversy, and where some predict peril in the outcomes, I see a future with new opportunities. I feel our future is bright, because we stand on the shoulders of great individuals that have established a tradition of over 100 years of tireless dedication to scouting, if we do the math and take 105 years with 10 leaders registered per year, and 10 campouts, summer camps or fundraisers, or training each year x 48 hours, that equals a half million adult volunteer hours. In 10 people all walk, those averages, as much as others to contribute, towards a number that high, not all, but. If you have worn the patch of Cubmaster, Scoutmaster, Venturing Crew Slash, Exploring Post Advisor, that number is too low on their contributions and the support of their spouses. Thank you. I would like to conclude my presentation with a prayer, one that we say at the close of every meeting. But before that, I ask that we all reflect on those we miss, those that have passed on. And now raise your right hand and let's all make the scout sign. And now may the great master of all scouts be with us until we meet again. Thank you.